top of the thickest part uh, in the next minute or so. There's now a lovely halo forming around the sun, coloured halo. <coughs> oh, the light level is now dropping very rapidly. Well, I'm going to start the stopwatch now. Uh, we can work out later when totality starts. I make it 12, 17 and 51 seconds and the light level is getting very low now. It's rapidly fading out. Here we go. The crescent is getting smaller now. And there's the shadow coming from the west. Yeah, we can see the can shadow. See the darkening region as it comes racing across. And there's Venus appearing very brilliantly above and to the right of the sun. The cusp getting smaller and smaller and smaller now. And there's the shadow. And it goes. Oh. Yes! Whoa. Look at Bailey's feet! <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, yes! Wow, what a grow. Look at the grow. Jeez. Some descriptions, please, John. The corona is very distorted. There are, of course, um, a number of streamers. There's a single streamer going down, uh, just downwards to between about the 5.30 position. Two fairly even streamers going upwards, one almost at 12 o'clock, one at more like 10 o'clock. A number of striations near the poles visible. I can't at this moment see any prominences but I'm looking very carefully now with 7 by 50 binoculars I can see the inner corona very clearly um, I can trace the coronal streamer at the bottom out to one two two and a half certainly possibly three solar diameters um, the upper one I can trace it out to one and a half solar diameters and the one at about 10 o'clock out to one solar diameter very superb structure near the poles. The magnetic there. There is uh, Venus and Jupiter and Mercury. Very easy to see. Quickly looking over to the far side of the sky. Can't immediately. See. Yes, I can see Sirius and Canopus quite easily. Oh, look at that! I'm extremely surprised at how bright that corona is. That corona is stunningly bright. There's another one. Oh, look at the striations There's a the prominence. poles now. They are fantastic. Oh, there's a lovely prominence. Beautiful, coming into view just at about the half past 11 position. Wonderful prominence. Brilliantly red prominence. Magnificent. Diamond ring's about to come. Here we go! Yes! That was never three minutes. <laughs> Look at the shadow guy. You can see the curvature. Round for the peaks, just as I subscribed. And the colour. Right, well, we're uh, now at 12.23 UT. I think that was the quickest three minutes I've ever seen. That was certainly the fastest three minutes I've ever seen. Yes, we observed it through thin cirrostratus cloud. The uh, corona was quite spectacular. 
a fairly typical solar minimum corona in many ways. A single, equ single streamer in one equatorial direction, a double streamer in the other. A beautiful large red prominence came into view just before the end uh, of totality. The diamond ring was wonderful, lasted about three to four seconds. And the brighter planets were all uh, visible at the time. Venus, spectacular with its thin crescent, Jupiter below, and of course, Mercury above and to the left of the Sun. Not the perfect conditions that we might have hoped for, but I think the sight of the corona was certainly um, everything that we had hoped. As the eclipse ended, we were able to see the moon shadow rushing away over towards the east, and you could see the curvature um, set beautifully between the peaks of the nearby volcanoes, which are to the east of us, uh, near the border with Bolivia. Right, well, time now is 12.24. Did you have the time seconds. on the video? I had a stopwatch running. I didn't hit it. I hit it well before to tell. Bailey's beads were so superb. Simply, there was quite a bit of jitter on the camera. I'm not totally sure if I got the last diamond ring, but... Uh, yes, those equatorial streamers. Bailey's beads were magnificent. It went through the detail in those polar oh, yeah, bits. It was yes, fantastic. Yeah. And, and it's detail. very hard to capture on film that. I didn't oh, yes. that anybody really gets what you saw through binoculars. <laughs> well, I really look forward to seeing some of those pictures. But that three minutes seemed like 30 oh, seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Race I through. I kept on telling you not to look at the right planets and look at the corona. I know, but <laughs> Venus and Jupiter and Mercury were nice to see. I, I, I did glance at them, I just saw a few seconds. I didn't anything anyway. Yeah. Oh. I saw Venus. Oh. Mega, eh? Yeah. Yeah. The volcano looks quite see, different now. Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> what is that? Is that snow? Is it cloud, isn't it? Isn't that something? Isn't that something, eh? There wasn't a cloud. There was a cloud. It was snowing all <laughs> yeah. oh, well Thank you for bringing us oh, here. Okay. It wasn't perfect, but it oh, couldn't it have been. Right. It wasn't yeah. bad. It wasn't it was bad. bad. Yeah. Yeah. We, saw, we saw what we needed to see. Completely different from the Hawaii one. Yeah. Totally different from Hawaii. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was a very spectacular oh, yeah. corona, though. I that was it, was, it was a fairly yeah. typical minimum corona. Wasn't it? Yeah, all that with the equatorial streamers yeah. and structure. Yeah. And very like that pic drawing I yes. showed, yes. actually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. so. But yeah. that lovely red prominence that just came yes. in. Yes, yeah. just at the end. Yeah. The diamond ring, like that was that was really very oh, boy, uh, much really more good. orangey than I remember <laughs> in Hawaii. Yeah. It was a, a very orangey colour. Yeah. Oh. oh dear. Incredible. He's loading sick now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, a hundred yards. Yeah. Well done, John. Yeah. Well, what do you think, mate? <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. It really was. Well, I hope the others got it as well. Oh, well. yeah. oh, oh dear. I, think, I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I would well, never John, believe two eclipses could be so different. <laughs> Every <laughs> single eclipse you'll see is different. Yes. They are never the same. <laughs> no. Um, no. And the ambiance was nice. We got the volcanic peak. Right and the, the, the way the shadow yeah. absolutely fitted that curve was yeah. wonderful. I yeah. got around to take pictures of that. Did really you talk? Nice. I'd yeah, love to I see a photo of that. I don't know where they came I out. It's a wonderful photo. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. But the diamond ring was more Yeah, oh, that it? was. I watched it until I just saw this thing in the binoculars, and it was lovely. I whipped my... And there it was. Bang. Yes. Oh dear. Yeah, John Mason waves that magic wand again. <laughs> oh dear. John, the thing that surprised me as, as a complete novice, uh, and never having seen one like that before, was uh, despite the thin cloud, it was still extremely dramatic. Yes. I mean, do you think we overestimated how thick the cloud was? I think we may have done. There's no doubt looking at it now, the cloud looks very thin. Fortunately, just before the onset of second contact, it moved out of a thicker band into a very thin sort of pearly layer. There was a very nice halo when the sun was behind that. Uh, but once totality started, what surprised me was the brightness of the corona, how easy it was to see the structure. In 7x50 binoculars, the fine filamentary detail was wonderful, and the extent of the coronal streamers, even through that cloud, I could trace the one, uh, the longer single equatorial streamer, out to two and a half uh, solar diameters, and the others certainly out 
out to one, one and a half diameters. It was much more than I would have expected in the conditions I thought were there. But it wasn't as bad as perhaps it might have been. I think we we're very fortunate. I must admit, as an astrophotographer, I, I obviously kept what tried to capture it on video and on film. Um, but having seen just how spectacular it was in through thin cloud, I, I'm very tempted at future eclipses just to uh, uh, do it visually with binoculars. Well, I did not take any pictures this eclipse because I wanted to watch it. I wanted to see the structure of the corona as it would appear with the naked eye. There was a wonderful red prominence that came into view just towards the end of totality, and the diamond ring was quite spectacular and very different to the diamond ring in Hawaii. The diamond ring in Hawaii burst out very slowly, lasted quite a few seconds and was very white in colour, whereas this one, to me, had a certain orangey tint and was slightly shorter in duration than the diamond ring in Hawaii, but a wonderful eclipse. And as you can see, everyone here is, is really quite overwhelmed. And Martin, I'm so pleased that I'm taking you back to England, having actually seen a total solar eclipse. Well, uh, yes, I mean, I had, uh, I concentrated on the video and the, uh, uh, the photographs, but what really surprised me was uh, when I looked through the Celestron viewfinder, it was just as awesome to me to walk through the binoculars. I, I was very surprised now. On the ground glass screen, I could see the fine streamers, really fine, yes. wispy detail. I, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing the cloud, uh, right. in, in the Celestron oh, yes. viewfinder or well. um, on, on the viewfinder of the video camera. And when I, I looked through the binoculars, which I did oh, several so times yeah, around well, near the middle of the eclipse, uh, I was just that absolutely was staggered by the yes. detail because the, I mean, it, was it, was, it was through oh, was really fine, sort of thin cloud, but it was just yeah. so bright. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. What I particularly liked was near the solar poles, there was incredibly fine filamentary detail. It, it was just wonderful. There's no way you could, you could sort of describe it. it obviously, the uh, plasma is flowing out along the magnetic field lines. It's a very delicate structure there. But near the equator, you have these enormous amounts of, of plasma flowing out from the equatorial zones. It, it really was quite wonderful. And I have to say, a fairly typical solar minimum corona. Unlike Hawaii, which had a combination of a macro maximum minimum corona. This was fairly typical for solar minimum, so a wonderful eclipse. So how would you rate it on the scale of eclipses that you've seen? Oh! Or not so well, would you say that was a typical solar minimum? Yes, I would. I would say it was a pretty typical solar minimum corona. Oh, so certainly. different from yes. the Yes. Uh, one, one was not typical. It was a combination of a maximum and minimum corona. This one was certainly much more typical of a minimum corona. Um, I think in many ways, um, Hawaii probably still rates the most. But this rates certainly, I would think, second. And the reason is the ambience of the site we're in, the wonderful volcanoes, the, um, the fact that the, the shadow receded as it did, the volcanoes were lit up in a wonderful way. Total eclipses are not just about the sun and moon, they're about the place you actually observe them from. And we couldn't have had a much better place to observe it from than this.